Hello. Hello, everyone. We're back. <laughs> Here we are. Hello. Once again. Yes. Good to see you. It is good to see you. Well, we can't actually see, see the we can see us. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. Good to see you too, good Natalie. To be back. It is good to be back. Good to I'm be back. back. Video. <sighs> Week six of the term. Where's the term? No, I don't know. Anyway. Well, God, very quickly. Are you yes. finding that too, everyone? Yes. God, we're already past I'm, halfway. Well, it kind of got lost in the lockdown there and, you know, coming back and a some people back and some people not back at school and some people at church and not at oh, church. Well. But now everyone can come to church, come to church, not come to church. We can sing if we've got our mask on and we've had our double jabs and we can have fit more people in because now we're allowed to have Person, two square so minutes. come back if you haven't come back yet now's the time and we're all starting church together as yeah, well it's lovely downstairs yes. do, don't come here we get to be in church together that's excellent with the adults as well yes. which is great very very nice yes. starting to get back to normal it is so speaking of normal why don't we pray yes that's what we're doing. so last time uh our loving heavenly father we thank you for the change in restrictions which means that more people can come to church now uh, we thank you that we're able to sing uh, songs that uh, praise you. Uh, thank you that we can do it here. Even if we have to wear a mask, we're so excited to be able to sing praises for you. And we thank, thank you for that. We thank you for the continuing lower cases here in New South Wales of COVID. And we pray that uh, throughout the rest of the world where there's countries really struggling still with high caseloads and still lots of people dying, we pray, Lord, that you would be uh, changing that and that these these cases would drop. We pray for your people in those areas that they would be able to share the good news of Jesus and the hope that that brings for the future, even in the midst of darkness and hopelessness that are in some parts of the world. We thank you that today we can spend time together. We thank you that we are going to be looking at a part of Isaiah which is so important um, to what we believe as Christians and uh, points us straight to Jesus. And so we're thankful for that. Uh, we pray for our friends, the Felthams and the Rose. We uh, thank you that the Felthams are able to sort of put some more plans into place of going to uh, Kenya next year. We thank you that we'll be able to visit, they'll, sorry, they'll be able to visit us next year as well. We'll get to meet them, which is really great. We pray uh, for the people in Kenya who are at the college where they're going to be. We pray, Heavenly Father, that uh, you would help them to continue learning, even though it's really tricky with uh, the internet not being great all the time over there, uh, with difficulties of um, travelling and all those sorts of things. We pray, Lord, that you would continue to help your people over in Kenya to learn more about you. We pray for the Rose too. We thank you for their continued ministry at the University of New South Wales. And uh, we pray that in the last few weeks of this year, they would really some great times with the staff and students that they've met throughout the year both online and in person and we pray that you would continue to grow your kingdom through their work there we pray for us now as we spend some time looking at your word that you would be helping us to love and serve you better and that you would be growing us to become more like jesus for we pray in his name amen amen you know natalie and i were just saying what are the rules for Getting together and, you know, can we see with the mask on? Can we do this? I was just thinking, oh, my gosh, rules. Lots of them. Oh, schools. Like schools. Schools got lots and lots of rules. There's some rules at homes. What happens if you break them? Well, you, you know, if you get into trouble, you could have a consequence or you could get hurt. I suppose there's always consequences. Yeah. Sometimes there's natural ones, like if you're running on the concrete at school where you're not meant to, and there's a school rule that says don't run the concrete and you fall over. That's a natural consequence. The rules are there. They are for a good reason. Or you might get put on detention. Oh. Oh. Yeah. oh. Have you ever been on detention? You have you ever supervised detention? No, I've never been. <laughs> Maybe oh. you've had to write a reflection letter. Oh, yes, I've read a few reflection okay. letters <laughs> in my time, but yes, all these rules and rules and the consequences and mm. and um and Punishments, you know, not really. If you break a rule, usually there's a punishment, a consequence, a punishment. So if you are speeding in your car, you might get a fine, or even worse, you might have a car accident, yeah. you hurt yourself or someone else. 
I caught up with Gus this week. Oh, great. And he, did he have a consequence? What? He broke some rules. Oh, and you, yeah, I mean, that might come as a surprise to you. <laughs> he did break the school. He did. Well, he, the rule, well, anyway, look. We'll go and he find did out, something wrong you. and there was a punishment. Let's find out what okay. he did. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Gus. Hi. What's been happening this week? Anything interesting? Oh, nothing much. Nothing much. Oh, you look like you're um, hiding. Yeah, I am. Who are you hiding from? You, and I did embarrassed. Hmm, okay. Well, maybe I should find out more. What are you embarrassed about, Gus? I got into trouble at school. Again? Yep. Okay, well, you going to tell us what happened at school? Uh, yeah, I suppose so. Okay, can't wait to hear this. Well, I was with a big group of kids and we turned off the light. Uh-huh, nothing wrong with turning off a light. In the girls' toilets. Oh, okay. And we locked the door. Uh, were there girls in the girls' toilets? Yeah. Mm. Okay. So they were all locked in there. Yeah. And we wouldn't have got caught if they didn't scream their heads off. Ah! I don't blame them for screaming their heads off if they're locked in the toilets and the lights are off. Was it dark? Yeah. Pitch black. Pitch black. Gus, you should know better than that. Yeah, I know. Because you remember the time you got caught in the pantry and you were scared because it was so dark? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Scary when it's dark. Yeah. Okay, so you got caught? Yeah, only because they were screaming. You got caught because you were doing the wrong thing. Yeah. But it wasn't my idea. Whose idea was it? Hugo. Oh, your new friend down the street? Yeah. His idea, and I got caught. Uh, doesn't matter whose idea it was, Gus. You did the wrong thing and you got caught. Yeah, me and a whole lot of other kids. Okay, so what happened? Well, you had to go and sit outside the office. Yeah. And did you get a punishment? Was there a consequence? Not for me. How come? Did you you turned off the light though, didn't you? Yeah, I did. And uh, you frightened all the girls. Yeah, I did. And who actually locked the door? That was me too. Oh gosh. Oh my goodness. So, um, what was the consequence? I didn't get one. How come? Snot did. Snot? Yeah. You mean Scott? That's not his name. I know it's not his name, but neither is Snot. Anyway, tell me what happened. Oh, he was just there. Did he turn off the light? No. Did he lock the door? No. Was he involved at all? Not at all. Wow. What? So he said he did it? Yeah. Silly thing. Why did he do that? I don't know. He just, he didn't want me to get into trouble. Oh, what a nice boy. Well, Gus, I hope that now you and Scott are, are friends. His name's not Scott. I Well, whatever his name, you really should find out his name. And I think that you and he could be friends now. It seems to me like he wants to be your friend. Oh, no. Why not? Because he still has the issue with the nose. Just overlook the nose. I can't. Okay. All right. Well, we'll catch you next week, okay? And in the meantime, you be a good boy at school. Yeah, okay. No turning off any more lights. Yeah, okay. And no more scaring the girls. Oh, I'm not. That's great fun. Yeah, I know, but you need to be a good boy. 
Okay, bye guys. In the book of Isaiah, we read that God promised to send his servant. God's servant would take the punishment for God's people. Eleven times in chapter 53, we read that God's servant would stand in our place. What do you think of when you hear this sound? Bees. Bees hurt because bees sting. But there are some children when they hear this sound that are very, very afraid because they're allergic to bees. If a bee stings them, they become very, very sick. They have to get to hospital very quickly. Let me tell you a story about a little girl who was allergic to bees. One day, the little girl and her dad were driving along in their car and the little girl was so excited. Her best friend was turning five and she couldn't wait to get to the party. The trip seemed to be taking forever. The lights went red and for the third time they had to stop at the traffic lights. While they were waiting for the lights to change, a bee flew in the car window. Buzz! The little girl saw the bee immediately. She sat up straight and didn't move. Dad! Dad! Her dad had the radio on and didn't hear either her or the bee. Dad! Her dad turned around. One look at his daughter and he knew something was wrong. He turned off the radio and then he heard it. Buzz! The little girl's eyes widened as the bee buzzed closer. Buzz! Dad! Stay still, sweetheart. Don't move. The little girl sat very still. She was terrified. The bee came closer and closer. Buzz! Her eyes watched as the bee began to buzz around her head. Dad! Just stay very still. It was just about to land on her when the bee disappeared into her dad's fist. Ah, oh, the little girl relaxed. She looked at her dad's fist and smiled. But just then her dad opened his fist and the bee flew out. She looked at her dad and screamed, Dad! But her dad simply smiled back and he shook his hand. Don't worry, sweetheart, the bee stung me. It's a honeybee. Once a honeybee stings, it dies. It only has one sting. The girl smiled. She had nothing to fear. The honeybee had stung her dad. Just then the traffic lights changed and they continued on their way to the party. Her dad took the sting of the bee for her. He willingly got stung so his little girl could live. In Isaiah 53, we read that Jesus was willing to be punished for us. He took our place, died our death and paid for our sins. And he did it for us so that we could live. How good is that? What a great story about the bees. It was a great story about the bees. And how loving was that dad oh, yeah. to take yeah. the place, yeah. to take the sting, I suppose, so that his daughter didn't die. That yeah. was amazing. That was great. That's great. You know, it made me think about Isaiah and the Old Testament and the time of Moses when they, you know, they were escaping Egypt and they had to kill the lamb and put the blood on the door frame, door frame. so that the angel wouldn't harm them and then they could get away from Egypt. Yeah. yeah. And so I suppose back in those times, often it was a lamb who would take the place of the person. Not and in Isaiah 53, oh, looking at today, Isaiah 53, it took, um, Isaiah talked about someone who would come to take the place. Right. Of the lamb. Okay, the lamb would. So all the these stories. And it was the stories. servant as well, wasn't it? The servant. We've been learning about the servant. Yes. servant. The servant would come and yes. take it. Okay. But lambs and sheep and shepherds come up a lot in the Bible. They do, they? don't they? In the New yeah. Testament, and way back in the Old Testament with Isaiah. They do. Yeah. So this servant would die in the place of the people, God's people. Yes. Okay. And there's a video about that. Oh, great. Let's, Let's watch it now. God's story. Preparing for Jesus. So part of God's story is about how he prepared us for Jesus, and it begins like this. Remember when God created a perfect garden? He then created a perfect family, Adam and Eve, to live in the garden with him forever. He trusted them with life as long as they obeyed one rule, 
Unfortunately, Adam and Eve didn't trust God, and they disobeyed. Now Adam, Eve, everyone would have to die, separating us from God forever. This made God very sad, but he had a plan. He knew that he could still save his people through a great rescue, Jesus. Jesus was a big deal, and just like any big deal, people had to get ready for him. It's like before a big movie comes out, you watch the previews so you know what's coming. Well, Jesus was such a big deal that his previews started thousands of years before he came. The first preview is about a man named Abraham. God promised to make Abraham the father of God's special family. God gave Abraham one special son to start the family, Isaac. Now Abraham knew that one day he would have to die because of what happened in the garden. Every time Abraham did something wrong, God could have said, okay, because you've done this bad thing, you now have to die. But he didn't. Instead, God said, how about killing a lamb instead? It can die so you don't have to. Thank you, said Abraham. But one day, God asked Abraham to do something different. God said, okay, because you've done this bad thing, your son Isaac has to die. This made Abraham very sad, but he decided to trust him anyway, even though this meant that he would never have the giant family God had promised. When Isaac asked where the sacrifice was, Abraham said, God will provide it. And guess what? He did. A ram died, so Isaac didn't have to. The second preview happened hundreds of years later. Abraham's family, the Israelites, had gotten huge but they were stuck as slaves in Egypt under a mean king called Pharaoh. He would not let the Israelites leave, so God said, okay, because Pharaoh has done this bad thing, every firstborn son in the land of Egypt has to die. The bad news was this meant that the Israelite sons would have to die along with the Egyptian sons. But the good news was God, once again, created a rescue plan. God said, Anyone who kills a lamb and paints the blood on their door will be saved. The destroyer will pass over your house. The lambs died so the sons didn't have to. Over and over again, when there was trouble, God sent a sheep to die so his people didn't have to. Until finally, God revealed his final rescue plan. The previews were over. It was time for the feature presentation. At last, Jesus the rescuer came. He lived on earth just like us but then he died to take away the punishment we deserved. Jesus died so we don't have to. But guess what else? Jesus didn't stay dead like the sheep. He came back to life and went up to heaven. Now we can be close to God again. And one day, he'll recreate a perfect world for God's whole family to live in forever. Just like the original garden, but better. And that's the story of how God prepared us for Jesus. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Death separated us from God. God planned a great rescue. He gave us previews. A ram died so Isaac didn't have to. Lambs died so the Israelite sons didn't have to. Finally, Jesus died so we don't have to. But Jesus came back to life. Now death can't separate us from God. And that's a part of God's story. So Alison, in that, that video we just watched, there was the lambs and there's Jesus, and we learned about the dad as well in, in the story, story that you told us. Yeah. So it's like the, the big difference in when I was kind of watching those things and thinking about Isaiah is that the dad, although he took the place, he took the sting for his daughter, he didn't actually die. No. Yeah. Whereas Isaiah tells us, and the stories from the Old Testament tell us that Jesus, the servant, did die in the place of the people. And the dad taking the sting for the child, that just happened very spontaneously. It's like, like an accident. Very the moment. moment. But Jesus dying for the sins of the people was all planned. I and mean, I suppose we know that from Isaiah. Isaiah we do is talking that. about something hundreds of years yes. before Jesus was even born. So it was all planned. It was all part of God's plan. Even before the beginning of time, God had said he would rescue his people by sending a servant who would take their place, take the punishment that they should have been experiencing. Yes. And isn't there a Bible There is a Bible verse. I'm going to read it to you. Isaiah 53, 6. Ooh. 
Sorry, you can watch help it. <laughs> You might see that on the kids' spot, but we're going to play it for you because you might not know what Alice is talking about. So it said, this is Isaiah 53, 6, says, All of us were like sheep that had wandered off. We had each gone our own way, but the Lord gave him the punishment we deserved. Who's him? Him. Good question. Him is, in Isaiah's case, the servant, but we know because we live after the New Testament that it was Jesus. Jesus. Yes. Yeah. And so we are going to play that song now for you, the Isaiah 53, 6. <laughs> um, but Colin, in his song, he uses a different word for God <gasps> our own way. Be gone in iniquities. Do you want to try saying that? No. Iniquities. iniquities. Mm. Very old-fashioned word. It is, yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. What's it mean? So it means, I suppose, what we would say sin yes. now. But then we go, well, what does that mean? So Colin describes it as the wrong things that we do and the good things that we don't do. So pretty much it's living our own way instead of yeah, God's way. Yeah, yeah. Doing things our way. Iniquities. Iniquities, yeah. So when you hear that word in the, in the song that's coming up, you'll know what it means. Isaiah 53, 6. Colin Buchanan. There. Wee! <laughs> We all like sheep have gone astray, ba ba do ba ba. Each of us has turned to his own way, ba ba do ba ba. But the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Sing ba ba do ba ba, Isaiah 53 6. Ooh. We all like sheep have gone astray, ba ba. Each of us has turned to his own way Ba, ba, do, ba, ba But the Lord has laid on him The iniquity of our soul Sing, ba, ba, do, ba, ba Isaiah 53, 6 <clears throat> Alright, it's your turn now We are So we're going to pray now. We're going to do the echo prayer again. So would you like to echo? Okay, I'll be the echo this time. So you join with me. Yeah, you join with her. I'll say it first and then you join with Natalie okay. as we pray to God. Let's, let's pray. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you that Jesus died. Thank you that Jesus died. And took the punishment. And took the punishment. For our sin. For our sin. Please help us. Please help us. To trust Jesus. To trust Jesus. To take the punishment. To take the punishment. For all our sins. For all our sins. Amen. Amen. Now, Alison, you know, I was thinking about, it's a really great thing that Jesus took the punishment for us so that we didn't have to experience God's anger and take the consequences that we deserved. But, you know, I've been thinking, it also means that there's something else good for us. It means that we've been forgiven mm. and that means that we can spend forever with God. Jesus, the servant, has come to take us home and that was part of our thing. Light from the darkness, God has come to bring his people home. The fact that the servant came and took the consequences that we deserve means that we can go home with God. And you might be right too. Okay, is this what it's, did I already? You almost did. did. It's all right. It's all, you almost did. Here we go. So, it's a good do summary. You want to Jesus came to take our place, to die our death for our sins. Look at our light. Our darkness is slowly getting covered up. Yes. By the light of the world. Yeah. Which brings us to our memory verse. It does bring us to our memory verse. <laughs> no, 
sounds very streamlined. <laughs> Good segue. <laughs> what is it again? I know it's got Jesus blood. <laughs> Let's do it, everyone. We're going to do it. Okay, ready? I, I am the light for the, for the world. world. Follow me and you won't be walking in the dark. You will have the light that is life. John chapter 8, verse 12. We did it and we did look, look, how did you go? I hope that you could do it as well. Yay! It only took us six weeks. <laughs> I brushed this. No? Okay. And you may like to, you know, I mean, here's a little bit of extension work for you. If you want to learn another memory verse, Isaiah 53, yes. 6. That's a good one to learn. And you can just learn Colin's song. That's what I did. Just if you're reciting it to someone, just don't go, mm. no, because yeah, that might be a little bit weird. You might scare them a little bit. Yes. 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 But speaking of sheep, here we have <laughs> a craft for K2. Let me move on this side so I can bring it up and you can see. This is in your activity, your resource packs, or it's online as well. So this is for K2, 3 to 5. You can feel free to do it as well, of course. And Who doesn't love to make a lamb? I know, it's quite fun, isn't it? And especially putting the cotton wool balls on. So that's it's. There's Isaiah 53, 6 written at the top here, and you can stick some wool balls onto your sheep to make it a woolly sheep. Then 3 to 5, you have got this activity sheet, and it says up here, the bee stung dad. And again, K to 2, this is something that you could do. So if you're K to 2 or 3 to 5, you might like to draw a part of the story there. You could put your favourite part. You might like to, if you really are into drawing, you might like to do a bit of a comic strip of what happened in the story that Alison told us earlier about the bee stung dad. Or you might like to just write it. That's probably my way because I'm not the greatest of drawers, as you know, so I would just probably write some things down. But that's pretty ordinary. So you might want to draw some pictures. We'd love to see them as well if you did do that. So bring them in when you come next week. Next week. Excellent. Well, that is the end of week six of Kids Church. Is that the end? Have we finished? Did we miss something? No, we finished. No, we finished. Yay! And we would really love it if you were here with us in person. Yeah, that's so much better. So, look I forward to see games you. and stuff. Yeah, we've got a game this week, which of course we can't do on the video, but we're doing in person. So, why don't you come along and join us? Say, Mum and Dad, we want to go back to church. Yes. And yes. we can fit you in. The best power. Bye. Bye. See you next week. Bye.